All right, guys, it's pretty windy, so I hope you forgive me for the wind noise, but we're over at the house, and on this video, we are definitely getting the RX-7, the V8 RX-7 running and driving, so stick around. So, uh, got the radiator here. It's not like one for this car or for the swap. Um, it's just something I'm gonna try to make work. And uh, we gotta do some brake lines, put the clutch master cylinder in, bleed the clutch, bleed the brakes, put the drive shaft in, uh, gas tank, sending unit, and all that stuff. And we should be able to take this thing for a little spin around the block. Um, I'm not gonna like really get into really too much detail, unfortunately, because I'm gonna try to get to this really, really quick. But I'm gonna flip around and show you what we got going on the brake lines and the solution. And then, you know, then we do the radiator and so on and so forth. But anyway, let's get started because I'm dead serious on this. I'm so ready. Alex, when I bought this swap kit from Stenberg, they make a really nice radiator kit that lets you have the intake. It comes right forward, kind of like the Corvette does. So I'm going to try to replicate that since they're out of business now. I wish I'd have bought it when I bought the swap. But it's like 3500 for the swap or 3000 whatever it was. And then another 1500 for the radiator. I'm not rich, so I couldn't do that at the time, and that kind of, unfortunately, they went out of business, so now I can't get it, which is really a bummer, but anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to make that radiator work. Like I said, uh, it'll fit in here straight up, so if I have to do that, I will, and just run an intake and have it right there, but if not, I'm going to try to lean it forward, basically, so it'll be kind of like down at this angle, and then have the intake come out and go right in front of the uh, radiator, which will be just like the Stenberg kit. Okay, just give you all a quick look probably something like this you can kind of see like I said the intake should be able to come out and go right over here um, I ordered this radiator and look at that it is like I don't think I could have spared any it's like perfect fitment <laughs> but anyway um, so it probably lean forward a little bit more than this um, you can kind of see those little tabs right there I'll probably weld some tabs to those and just have it bolt right there um, and this one hose right here oh, shoot. It'll come out or go directly into that. This one right here will be a little bit more challenging. It'll probably go down a little bit and go over here. But this is a pretty good radiator. It's probably the biggest one I could get to fit in this little tight area, this engine bay. Um, but that's gonna look pretty sick. And then you know, there'll be a shroud right here that will cover this up and go right here and be nice. And basically the intake will come out and go right into that. And the filter will be down in here. So I'm really thinking I can make this work. Um, probably not gonna go through the headache and doing all that work right now I'll probably just basically put a bar across here so it'll sit <laughs> on the core support and get everything hooked up because my main goal is just to get this thing running this is gonna take a lot of fabrication so I'm not really trying to do all that today and I don't have the means to weld aluminum so I have to take it to a shop and there's no way I'm waiting it's nice this weekend uh, besides the wind so I am determined to drive this car this weekend it is happening I don't care so I just kind of want to show y'all quickly the idea that I had, and it'd be kind of cool. I think you'd be able to see it. Like I said, of course, it will be a little bit lower than this. Um, but you should be able to see it through the grill. I think that's going to look really sick. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the lines of what I'm thinking about. For now, I'm just going to kind of like uh, ghetto fab it up in here and uh, get some lines to it so that I can run the car and actually drive it. But. I'm actually really, really happy on this. I looked for a radiator forever and ever because I was so bummed I couldn't get that uh, Stenberg one anymore. Yeah, we're going to move on to some different stuff. I'm just going to like get this guy set up here so it'll work. All right, guys, this is what we got. I got some little braces right here just to keep the radiator up off the ground. Um, got these hoses running. Uh, worked out pretty good, I guess. All right, so this is just very, very, very temporary stuff and, and no way to you know a way to do this but I say it will work for now and that's all I care about um, a sharp eye viewer I guess would notice that there's no fill um, nozzle or cap whatever you want to say on this radiator um, you know my intentions are to turn this old oil catch can into into an expansion tank just kind of sit it right here or something like that I don't know, maybe like this or like this, I don't know. But as you can imagine, that's going to take some fabrication. I might even put it over here in this corner. I thought about doing it something like that. 
because that would definitely be like the highest you know basically just cut this off and put a uh, radiator fill neck right here have some lines running out of the bottom right through here maybe into the uh, heater core in and out I'm pretty sure that's what that's for down there I'm not sure anyway maybe something like that and of course I'll have the uh, I think they call this thing like the steam something I have no idea but yeah, it's basically to let the make sure all the air is at the cylinder heads but run that guy over there too so I'll probably do it right here just because it'd be a whole lot cleaner you know just hook it right there and it'll be the two hoses radiator you know you can pull the motor and that will stay with the engine so I'll probably do that but of course I'm not gonna do that right now so I'm just gonna fill this thing up the best that I can like I said uh, the car is not gonna be driven around like this basically just so I can crank it up and move it and uh, actually drive it around the block a little bit but anyway for the most part, as far as I'm going to go with the radiator, with the cooling system now, I said I got to get like some little tabs and make the stuff that I want, and I got to figure out an intake before I start fabricating, because if I, if I mock this in place and I buy an intake and it doesn't clear or fit, you know, the hood and all that stuff is going to play a factor. So for now, that's just the way it's going to be. But I'm going to move on to the master cylinder real quick. All right, I was going to put the uh, master cylinder on. And I kind of got distracted messing around with the brakes. Um, I'll flip it around, show what I got going on, explain it a little bit. Okay, guys, for the brake, for the brake lines, whatever, I basically just used the stuff, the factory Mazda brake lines. I just kind of picked and choose. You know, I used the ones coming out of the wheel arch. Um, sorry about the wind. Um, but yeah, the one that come out of the uh, arch that goes to the brake caliper, I pretty much used that one. And I just run it up here. Uh, I got a little T fitting that's going to go right there, but. Um, I foolishly left it over at the other house. But yeah, that's just one of the brake lines that kind of separated. The one that fit the best is just the one I ran back there. And uh, on this side right here, I'm probably just going to bend this line out as straight as I possibly can and just have them join up right here. And uh, I'll flare this out and put an end on it and they'll hook up. Now I'll take care of the front lines. The rear line is pretty simple. Uh, it's basically just the rear line that runs all the way to the back. Uh, so it's all the way from the back. It's just all factory. But this metal line right here is actually, um, I think, the clutch slay cylinder metal line. <laughs> but I'm not going to use that, of course, this being a V8 swap. Uh, it actually worked perfect. So I just kind of ran it to the brake master cylinder, bent it just around there, and it just hooks right in. So I'll take care of the rear. And uh, she should be good with the brakes right there. So helped on that. That's easy. Anyway, this is the CQ master cylinder for the clutch. And I gotta get the old uh, master cylinder out and they come with the lines and everything and a remote bleeder so get this unbolted get everything put on and then I'll show y'all you know what it looks like on the car but it shouldn't be that that difficult I don't guess getting on the ground is be the worst part but as you can see it's still kind of a little dampish back there so we'll start up here with a little drier <laughs> alright guys uh, we're back over here messing with the uh, RX-7 I got the little T-fitting, um, actually just ended up finding one and all, all the junk I have laying around. That's pretty much it. So the way this is working, it's coming out, going into here, loops down, splits off and goes to each of the front brakes. And that's just a factory line that comes down in the factory location, all that good stuff. And the rear, um, it goes through the proportioning valve, out right here, loops back under. Goes all the way around to the back. Yeah. And uh, like I said, that's just the factory hard lines. I just kind of use the ones that would make the connection and make it work. It comes over here, bends over. I'm not trying to make a clean engine bay or anything like that or tuck it. I just want it to be easy to service. You know, if I need to take this side right here off, I can just take it loose right there, take it loose over there, whatever. So brake lines are working out pretty good. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look up the directions, which is I don't I hate to say it, but this line that Siki sends with their kit doesn't seem to want to uh to actually clip into where the factory uh GM line would go. So I'll have to figure that out. But anyway. Alrighty. Had to drop the transmission because you the factory gm you know it has like that style fitting i don't even know what it's called 
the Siki kit, they give you this little adapter. So you can basically run an AN, and they give you one for the self bleeder, or the remote bleeder, whatever. But yeah. Uh, so you gotta drop transmission to get the master cylinder out. So it's something I wish I'd have known before I put the engine transmission in. So that kind of sucked. But anyway, just a little hiccup. We're gonna keep on rolling on though. Alright guys, like always it's taking way longer than expect you know expected, but we're making good progress. Um I'm gonna flip it around and show you how far I've got. But I think I've already showed you the brake lines and stuff like that. I just got the clutch line because I actually filled the reservoir with fluid, so it was leaking and I wanted to leak all over the car. But I got my uh, line run to my T, then it splits off to the nitrous, which had the nitrous gas line loose so we can uh, purge the system. There's going to dirt in it. It's basically just running right down with the firewall. I still need to get in the tunnel and like tuck the line up. Um, I can't really get under there. We got tank in. These are. Uh, Russell or Russell E85 line, whatever it's like high PSI, so it's it's not going anywhere. Some good clamps. Let's see. Get up under here real quick. Oop. Too fat for this. But I went I wanted to use the hard line, the factory lines, but I just went with the soft line. So it's that uh soft rubber line right there. And it comes up here. Jeez. And you can see that's the uh, just a factory GM uh, fuel filter and pressure regulator. Uh, I got my brake line loose, so when we start bleeding the brakes, I think there's like a like a you know probably a lot of dirt in there. So, uh, but I left this little loop right here. There'll be like a little clamp that'll hold it right there. It's just going to run under the, you know run in the tunnel. But like I said, right now it's just really really loose because I need to tuck it up. But once I tuck it up and you know put some clamps on it, hold it. It'll be up and out of the way. Okay, just check the car for leaks. Got pressure. This will be the first official startup with the gas tank. So, let's see if the thing actually fires up and runs. Uh, here goes nothing. Whoa. <laughs> I'm so pumped. I'm like getting excited already.
you guys as you can tell by how much lights left outside been working on this thing pretty much all day um, we are ready to let it move for the first time under some power so I'm pretty pretty happy about that but I'm having a problem with the brakes um, I'm not sure what's going on I think uh, I think my master cylinder is bad which would make sense because they're set around forever but got a seat in there get a little light so you can see sorry for bad lighting but I kind of made a promise myself so I want to make sure I drive this thing for the weekend but I'm gonna throw the shifter on real quick clean all the stuff off of it and uh, see if she'll move all right guys sketch levels pretty real no doors no nothing I know the car runs but um, it's kind of odd feeling. <laughs> but yeah, we're about to take it around the block. It's a monster truck right now. It's like on the factory suspension. It's ridiculous looking. Goodness! <laughs> All right. That's six gear. <laughs> Sit y'all down for a second. I'm gonna rip it a little bit, record it. Jimmy, I'm gonna rip it a little bit, record it. I don't know if you guys can hear it, power steering's working. I have like no brakes. Brakes are horrible. Like I said, my brakes are kind of crap. I don't know what's going on with them. Oh, nothing but wheel spin everywhere. So I don't even know I'm popping up right now for some reason. is like rear brakes. Try to stop this thing, get out. actually moves it is a total pile of crap but i still love it i'm so happy i wanted to do a big smoky burnout but i can't because my brakes for some reason the front brakes aren't working so close guys so close i'm so happy dude this thing is a total death trap it's so it's so horrible Oh man! Oh, love it. 
All right, guys, I am so, so pumped. Like, so this thing is dirty. It makes all kind of noises. Got a lot of work to do, but I wanted to drive it this weekend. That was my goal. I'm glad I did it. Um, I will get y'all that burnout soon, I promise. So, uh, but that's it. It's been a long weekend. I'm tired. I'm calling it a night. Like always, appreciate you guys watching. See you on the next one.